Welcome to our lesson about creating a mesh. I've got the part we've been working with in our last few lessons. The fixture is applied right here to the bolt hole. A hundred pounds of force is applied to this face. Before we get moving with the mesh, I'd like to say a couple words about FEA, or finite element analysis. Sometimes this is known as FEM, finite element method. What exactly is FEA? Well, it's basically a numeric technique for finding an approximate solution of a partial differential equation, as well as integrated equations. This sounds complex, but this is the theory that is behind the mesh principle in simulation. Let's review how it works. FEA uses a complex system of points called nodes that comprise a grid called a mesh. This mesh is programmed to contain material and structural properties that define how the structure will react to certain loading conditions. Basically, it works like this. SOLIDWORKS breaks your model into small tetrahedral elements, or small 3D pyramids. These little pyramids are connected to one another at common points, and those common points are called nodes. SOLIDWORKS sees your model as a network of discrete, interconnected elements. As a result, the program predicts the behavior of the nodes by combining information from all the elements which comprise the model. In our previous lesson, we skipped the setup of mesh parameters. SOLIDWORKS actually did that job for us behind the scenes. However, there are many instances where we would want to do that ourselves, rather than accepting SOLIDWORKS default settings. In many cases, the accuracy of your simulation depends on the type of mesh that you construct. In this lesson, and in our next couple tutorials, we're going to be learning how to create a mesh and how to customize it for your needs. Let's begin by right-clicking on the Mesh branch of our study tree. Select Create Mesh. The first parameter is Mesh Density. We can drag the slider between a coarse density and a fine density. As you can see, our dragging adjusts the values under mesh parameters. A coarse mesh means the segments of which my model consists will be larger. As a result, the calculation is going to be faster, but the disadvantage is that the result is less accurate. Now the further to the right I drag the slider, the smaller the size of the elements, my 3D pyramids, and the more accurate the results but it does significantly increase the resources demanded and slows down computing time. As you can see, we do need to trade off between accuracy and processing speed. Now the model I'm working with in this lesson is fairly straightforward, but if your model is complex, you're definitely going to notice this tight rope balance. It's important to mention that there comes a point in your design at which a finer mesh won't yield a much more accurate result but it surely slows down your computer's performance nonetheless. At this point, you may be wondering just how it is that you set the optimal mesh density. It's actually mainly a matter of trial and error for the most part, and with more experience comes more accuracy and a better ability to customize your mesh for your model. For example, you can start running a study with mesh parameters that SOLIDWORKS automatically sets for you as we did in our previous lessons. Then from there, you can increase the mesh density and run a second study just to see how much different the results are. If you find that the results are significantly different, then you can increase the mesh density again and let's say try a third study. You'd compare that third study to the second study to understand where the difference lies. Let's try it out. Let's move the slider to the far left to create a mesh with a fine density. And let's click OK. As you see, our model is now broken into tetrahedral 3D elements. We also see the mesh type, solid mesh. Let's right-click on the mesh in our study tree and select Mesh Details. The total number of elements is about 1100. Let's close the Details window and run a study. So 
SolidWorks gives us results almost instantly. The maximum stress is about 15,000 PSI. Let's create a new mesh now. Right-click on the meshed branch of the tree, Create Mesh. Remeshing will delete the results for Study 1. That's our warning from SolidWorks, and that's OK. Now let's increase the mesh density to Fine, and then click OK. Mesh progress is underway. Now let's right-click on the mesh, select Details. Total elements, as you can see, many, many more, approximately 50,000. And as you can see visually, the mesh is also much more dense. Now let's run a study. As you may be noticing, the computing time is significantly longer. It took about 10 seconds to complete the study this time. Of course, this is a very simple part. If the part is more complex, the calculation time can be significantly larger. Let's check our stress color distribution. Our maximum stress shows at about 22,000 PSI. That means there's about a 30% difference between our first and second result. Let's create a new mesh again. Right click, Create Mesh. Remeshing will delete the results of the previous study. That's OK. Now let's reset to the software default value, which is calculated based on geometry and material type. Let's click OK to accept these parameters. And let's run our study again. The calculation that you just saw took a couple seconds. Now the maximum stress level is shown at about 17,000 PSI. This concludes our first tutorial about mesh.